Welcome to another Softland tutorial video. The purpose of this video is going to demonstrate some of the tools that are available to you to add a, another level of detail to a kitchen design. The 3D model that you see in front of you is generated from one of our sample plants and already has a few items that have been added to the model to bring it a little more up to speed. For example, using the draw symbol option, I have added a undermount sink. I have also accessed the Kohler library to add a custom set of faucets. Now, in addition to that, you will see that on the wall there is a series of outlets and light switches. And these were added within the electrical mode in the placement point of where a standard um, switch or outlet has been added. And so you will see that if I were to do an edit here, I have a double wall outlet. The plan preview is literally what the face plate would look like if you were looking at it from plan. And there is a level of detail. And so this has been added to the drawing so that it appears within 3D. Going forward, um, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about how just with some quick edits you can modify things like cabinet hardware, countertop nosing, crown molding, and a backsplash. So to begin with, the easiest might be to just using the edit item tool, click on the upper cabinets, select the cabinet hardware, and from here you can add handles. And what you will see is the list of 3D symbols where you currently have the knob angled. And if I were to click the down arrow key, a whole host of DWG symbols would um, be there for me to select. So in this case, if I were to select, let's say, the pull pipe and click OK, the model will be regenerated with the pull pipe handles being used on the upper cabinets. And if that's the my style I want to apply to both the uppers and lowers, I'll just simply use the repeat edit tool, in this case, to click the lower base cabinets. With the handles added, the next thing we might talk about is going along with the editing of the cabinets might be the countertop. And so if I were to edit this um, base cabinet right here, you'll see the countertop tab will allow me to now come in and assign a nosing to the front edge of the cabinet. And I could even take the time to modify what overhangs are going to be used, etc. And so upon checking that, a default nosing will be added and if I do a repeat edit over here the same thing will be applied to that. So just a couple of editing tips that will allow you to very quickly bring up the speed that level of detail of handles and the countertop. Now I did intentionally did not add a backsplash to the counter instead we're going to put a tile splash or a stone tile splash on this wall in the back and in addition to that I'm also going to add some crown molding to the top of the cabinet. So let's start there. Crown molding can be added within soft plan through the interior mode. So within the plan, I'm selecting the mode selector in the upper right-hand corner and selecting interior. What you see on screen right now are the polygons that have already been added to soft plan for things like the flooring or the baseboard or wall covering for the paint color, etc. Uh, at this stage, if I select draw, followed by crown mold, it's going to open up my list of, of user customizable crown molding options that can be added. So in this case, if I select my style, I can now manually trace this in where the cabinets have been added and right click when the profile has been traced. And so at this stage, if I flip over to 3D, you will see that when it regenerates here, I now have the custom crown molding added to the cabinet. Now, 
if this were to be staggered, so let's just say, for example, I were to edit this corner cabinet right here, and maybe I'll modify the height to 48 inches. And just to take it one step further, just to give a little different profile, perhaps I'll even select, you know, we're going to have a grilled um, glass front door on this. Because I'm adding that glass grill, I may go in and assign the number of shelves that are going to be shown or counted. And so when I do that, it will regenerate the model, and you will see that the cabinet now pushes up through the crown mold. Basically, what's going to have to happen is I'll need to frame in or trim in the crown mold in the same way um, that you would build it. So I'm going to remove this crown mold that we have here. I'm going to go back into my interior mode, and this time, using the crown mold option, I'm going to do a manual trace around first the upper cabinet, followed by the two, if you will, lower of the upper cabinets. And so that was three traces in order to get it done, once around the upper cabinet, and then following the profile of the lower run of upper cabinets. And on a regenerate, you'll see now that I have my crown molding being trimmed out exactly as you would want it in on the house. The final thing we're going to do, and I could do it in the interior mode, or, or, or in this case, for, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do it right here in 3D, is to trace in a, a um, tile backsplash. And so in this case, I'm going to go to the Draw and Profile option, which will give me access to things um, like baseboard or crown mold. Or in this case, I'm actually going to use the chair rail option because it has a square profile that I can use to fasten to the wall and ultimately assign a stone texture. So upon selecting draw profile, chair rail, square, following the prompts in the status bar of select host plane, I'm going to click on the wall. At this stage now, it's prompting me to click my start point, and so where the counter needle meets with the wall, I'm going to click, and I'm just simply going to trace that perimeter or that line of the backsplash and click. At this stage, I can now select the direction that the chair rail is to be added, so I will click, and now it's just a continuous drawing process, much like if you drew a wall. You just simply continue to trace the perimeter um, of where you would like this to be applied, and so I will left click, and when I'm finished, in this case I only have two walls I'm assigning this to at this page, I will right click, and SoftPlan will go ahead and add that profile to the wall. I will edit this, and where the height and thickness are listed, place check marks in so I can override the defaults. And so in this case, I can now modify what those measurements are to be, and when I click OK, it will go ahead and change that height so that it fills in to the underside of the cabinet. Using the Surface Edit tool, I can now edit that backsplash, double click on the texture field, and at this stage, if I select the interior finish, tile, and stone, the pick button will allow me to see a preview of all of the textures that are available within that folder. And from here, I can simply make my selection. Once I click OK, that texture will now be assigned to the model. And so it's that simple. Um, the, the purpose of this video was how to add the detail. Uh, so with a, a quick edit, we were able to add the handles, the bull nosing, even change the profile height of the cabinet in the corner. Through the interior mode, we were able to draw the crown molding on the tops of the cabinets, first as a uniform crown mold, and then when the cabinet heights changed, to follow the profiles as trimming it out exactly as we would in the field. And then finally, using the Draw Profile tool within 3D, we were able to add the stone backsplash. And don't forget, we started the whole thing just by covering off very quickly how through Draw Symbols, we were able to utilize some of the custom symbols that ship with SoftPlan for the undermount sink, the custom faucet, and even the chairs. All of this is displayed in texture mode, but at, even at this stage, the level of detail is that much further along just through a few simple edits and drawing tools.